Guys, there's no milk in here? Well, I can get you some, Dad. From where? My sheep. Your sheep? I know we're not supposed to go out much, and we don't have any cow milk here. Sheep milk, huh? Yeah. All right, show me what's up. Yeah. You're just riding your sheep into town? I know we don't need but um, otherwise I have to have someone hold this, so I have to Yeah. And I will be remaking one of those at some point. With hey, everything hey, else. Hey, 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 hey. So, with sheep milking, this is one of the ones where our children have milked cows before, they've milked goats before, and we had to wean animals like this. So Pinky asked, hey, Dad, can we just start milking our sheep? And we said, actually, yeah. Um, this one here, I've not yet sheared, but her sister is right there. You can see there's quite a difference. She is sheared now. And this one is not, so she looks like twice as big. A big wild beast. And if you want, you can come see the bear. Okay. Show me her bag. So her oh bag yeah. Is a lot bigger than her sister's. So that big dangly thing there, that's her bag. There's her teats. Yeah. And uh, yeah. When red pepper milk sometimes her you, she's not all the way trained for milking. Uh, her you will tip over her stuff, so that's why there's some milk. Oh, oh yeah. Milk. The other one got milked earlier. You can see a little milk on the ground. Whoa! Show me that again. Wow. Hey, 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 hey. I gotta wipe it now. If I'm milking both the teeth at the same time, you can't do that. And that's how it milks. And she doesn't move her feet at all, so that's how I'm able to milk with two hands. Oh, you're doing both at the same time, huh? Mm -hmm. That saves time. So guys, you know, in some countries, sheep milk would be far more common. In some countries, goat milk would be far more common. Of course, here in the United States, most people are used to primarily just having um, cow milk, or their mother's milk maybe when they're babies. But this is one too, or once you kind of get past the stigma of, oh, sheep milk, um, it's actually rather good and good for you. So thankfully we're blessed to be able to have industrious little children like this who, uh, you know, this is an activity for Pinky Pepper that allows her to interact with her sheep. It allows her sheep to uh, become even more multi-purposed. It gives us something else to do with her besides just um, mowing the lawn and providing a fertilizer and um, reproducing more sheep. And more. Right, more sheep. And wool, and then, uh, you know, our sheep are also a meat source for us. So if you think about that, guys, they provide fiber. That's clothing. Or, you know, rope. Or, you know, yarn for crafts. They provide meat to feed our family. They provide milk to feed our family. They provide a service in mowing the yard. And they uh, also fertilize. And they help build up our soil. Um, they are a companion animal, too, to a degree, where it's something fun that our children can do. Uh, you know, she doesn't seem to mind you even riding her. Mm -mm. You know, these guys have uh, periodically done things like that. And uh, a lot of times she'll ride her over to her, uh, to her thing. And here, she just waits patiently. And this was one of the first sheep we got? Yep, she was my first sheep ever. First sheep ever. This one was actually given to us by a friend um, when we started getting rid of our pigs and changing up our diet. 
and no longer eating pigs and rabbits and stuff, um, a friend offered us some sheep to get us started, and uh, we picked up a, a ram and a ewe for free from them. We definitely appreciate them. Wish we saw more of that family. And then we uh, bought one off them anyway, um, just so we would have two ewes. And uh, they were so tiny when they came home, weren't they? They were like the size of him. Maybe I'll find some of that video and insert it here. When you milk sheep, you have to train them. They're a lot harder to train, I think, than goats. I've been milking her. I didn't milk her her first year she had a baby. I milked her her second year when she had twins. Then I started milking her. And she would kick. It's actually sometimes when she used to kick, I just trained her where I can milk with two hands. Um, it was actually easier for me to milk her on the ground where she's just running around. Because she'd stand still more than, I don't know why. Even if she had feet here, she wouldn't stand still. And now it's easy for me to milk anyway. And before I couldn't milk with two hands. So I could only milk with one. So I just. I, mean, I couldn't milk with two hands, but it was really hard for me to milk with my left hand. So it was not the best for me. But I taught myself to be able to milk with two hands. Blizzard! Oh, sure, a neighbor's driving by right now, so Blizzard has concerns. Um, and how much does this sheep give you on a daily basis? A pint. Or sometimes half a pint. But a lot of times she'll get a pint in the morning and a pint in the evening, right? Yep. So that's not too bad. And, uh,. And we've actually, uh, you guys have made butter out of it too, right? Mm -hmm. Sheep milk butter. And there's a number of things like, you know, soap or, or butter, or I think some people use it in like a, a hand sanitizer, like a moisturizing cream or stuff like that. But it is something you can drink or make cheese out and of. And it has lots of cream. It's like, it tastes like cow milk. It just, it's kind of creamy, but you can get the cream out if you don't like the cream. All right. And then you can make butter from the cream if you like butter. And this is the same container I milk into every day. And just to make sure our milk is clean, I will get a soapy washcloth, wipe it down, and dry her. And then um, I wash my hands before I milk her. And we deworm these sheep, especially the ones we milk. Um, we deworm them at least three or four times every week. When we were milking our goat, uh, we would always bring a bag out, and that had all our dewormer in it. And every time we milked, only in the morning normally, we'd give our goat Daisy some dewormer and she'd get dewormed every day. And her eyes, if they were uh, pale, then we'd sometimes give her dewormer twice that day, just so they could get pink red. Right. And that's the thing too, guys. If we were using some sort of high powerful synthetic, you know, chemical dewormer, we would, uh, you know, hit them once and they'd be good for a year. But we're really against some of that stuff, so what we like doing is, is a nice natural thing. So we have a blend of different herbs and different beneficial plants that help, and then you're going to be giving them on a more frequent basis. And actually in our pastures, I'm starting to build up things and add in a lot more yarrow and other things so that they have free access to a lot of different plants that are actually going to be more beneficial for them to help keep their immune system up, help keep their parasite level low. And over time, as we just kind of continue to build up our pastures, work on the rotational grazing, it should provide a nice, you know, kind of organic, healthier flock um, without the use of harsh chemicals or things that, you know, we don't really want in our animals' bodies, especially if we're going to be eating them or drinking their milk. And we don't really want, you know, them in our bodies either. So you just kind of break down that chain and go from there. He's almost done. 
Almost Red done. Red Pepper, she always thinks my U's done after I just get a few squirts out. But she hold, uh, animals hold a lot of milk in their milk veins, so you're going to have to massage them. And some people don't like to bump it just like the babies do. They just want to massage it. But it doesn't really matter. Just whatever you want to do. And right. Because if you've ever seen a lamb or a calf or something nurse. They really bump. I mean, they slam their head into their mom's udders. Just bam, bam, bam. Um. Um, so you're going to have to massage them to actually get them all the way done with m their milk that's in their That's some light bumping too? Yep. And we don't... People don't bump as hard as babies bump. I mean, right. babies just boom. And then it's, it's interesting that... I like the whole mom's back legs just jump up on our sheep. Especially her, her two big babies when they were four months old. They'd boom her and her whole back legs would go up. And I like this container because it has a lid. But a lot of containers have a lid. But I don't know, I just like to milk into this container for some reason. And we strain the milk inside with a strainer that we got off the website, and it came with some little filter things. Right, and so we kind of wipe her down, make sure you guys are clean ahead of time. Milk into a clean jar. If you've got one that's really kicky, what's the trick to use then? A jar. Yeah, you milk into a smaller container, and then every with time you get, you get a little bit in there, um, you dump it into a bigger container. That yeah, that's way, what I used to do. That way if it kicks, it's not kicking over everything you have. So you can hold the jar or something with one hand, milk with the other hand every time you get a little bit, dump it into your other one. And it's kind of like when you're cracking open farm eggs, you're more likely to get maybe a rotten one, especially when you've got small children collecting the eggs for you. So if you crack them into a little bowl first, make sure they're good. Before you dump them into your big batch, you won't ruin the entire batch. If uh, if something goes on, so really you just get a container. It doesn't really matter. You just milk whatever into it, and I actually had to do that. And then you just get a new container because we're using the same container. They step in gross stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's yep. just. Bad. And then when you get it inside, you uh, strain it, make sure there's no hair, nothing that fell in it, and then we uh, cool it, right? So yesterday morning, I got more than a pint. I got a pint, and there's these little seasoning jars that people buy at Walmart, and the glass, and the shaker. Um, and I got one of those also. So full one of those, and a full uh, quart, don't pint. So normally I get a quart from her every day. So she's actually going to go back in with Dodge, and it doesn't matter if they get pregnant. They will dry themselves up when they think they're ready to dry up. So with goats, sometimes you have to kind of dry them up, um, but sheep, they, at least these ones, they dry themselves up when they think they're ready to dry up. So if you're afraid of cows or cows, you just don't have the time to get cows or, or you don't space. have enough land, um, you can get sheep or goats. Sheep, I've trained her, so she just gets a little bit of feed. Yeah, she nibbled on that feed for like less than a minute. And she's just been waiting patiently the rest of the time. She got her snack, her treat, and it didn't take much. So now... I'll grab that for you. Oh, that works. Good idea. I spray her with this teat wash. Hmm. Kind of that was a homemade teat wash you guys made? Oh, uh, yes. Any idea what's in there? Um, soap and <laughs> water and eucalyptus. Oil, yeah, so and they make some different blends. Oils in it. There's essential oils and other things. And we've got some uh, spray bottles of like a uh, a pest control one too to help reduce ticks or anything like that. Normally I milk from the sides. I used to milk from the sides, but right now it's just easier because. Otherwise, I have to duck down, and I can't see her whole bag because she's too woolly right now. Right, and I will shear her for you soon. Um, and so just milking from the back, I can see her whole bag. I can massage it better, and just making sure nothing's wrong with it. So I just do that, and normally when I put her back in the pen, she goes and grazes with Dodge and stuff. So then... She doesn't lay down and get her bag all dirty after I sprayed it. And this is, you know, a dual purpose sheep. It's a Northern European short tailed sheep. It is a combination of Shetland and Finn, which means her little rambling here is a combination of Shetland, Finn, and Jacobs. But he looks pretty good. So, uh, Come on, I know you people do use them for meat. 
and they do use them for wool. And uh, we can use them for milk too. Otherwise, dogs will open the gate. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for the milk. I appreciate it. Breakfast is served. With sheep milk. Oh, I don't want to spill it. But watch. See that? Sheep milk, guys. So how much did we get today? Um, almost a pint. Just over half a pint. And as she was saying earlier, we let those ones out to help graze this area too, which gave them their their children, their lambs, an opportunity to potentially nurse from them. There was some unsuccessful nursings that they watched where the mom would actually kind of ram them away and say, leave me alone. Um, but if you do something like think that your animals are completely weaned and then reintroduce them to them, I mean, when we had King and Daisy, mm -hmm. King was like a year old or something, and he remembered, hey, this is mom, this is where I get milk. So when we introduced them to one another, the milk supply went down again because he knew. Mm -hmm. mm. And Blueberry, she was ramming him because she didn't want him to do that. Right now, I would never be able to tell, like if somebody just put this bowl of cereal in front of me, I would never suspect anything was up. I would never be like, hmm, is that sheep milk or something? You know, this doesn't taste like cow milk. It tastes just fine. Hmm. So, obviously, by being creative and doing things that a lot of people don't do, by letting the children explore some of the things that they enjoy doing, you know, they came up to ask us and they said, can we milk our sheep? I said, yeah, yeah, you can. You can milk your sheep. And it began to provide something for our family. Helps us be a little more self-sufficient, provide something that we can use, you know, for breakfast with our cereals. We can explore other options with soaps and cheeses and different things, but if these kids are getting two pints, what two pints is a quart, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, we can have quite a bit of milk on a daily basis just from our sheep. And you know, that's one reason too why I consider them to be the best lawnmowers I know of. There's a lot of fluid in a lot of lawnmowers that I would not want to drink. There's some fluid in these lawnmowers I would not want to drink. But there's a fluid, milk, inside our lawnmowers that I would love to drink. And uh, so we do. We drink it, we have it with our cereal. It works out really well for us. Shut down the video. Okay, I have to tell you something. Normally I milk earlier. I try to wake up at six. This morning, Mama, I'm I woke up by myself at six because Mom and the rest of the peppers were being kind of loud. Um, but everyone seemed to go back to sleep. Red Pepper fed the calf for Mama Pepper because the calf was right out here. Um, and we just went, accidentally went back to sleep. I woke up at 8, did the rest of the chores, which kind of took a little while. But normally I try to milk her at 7 or 8 and then milk her at 6 or 7 at night. And that's the thing with it too, if you're able to be consistent, it's going to help. If you're able to do it, you know, if you're milking once in the morning, once at night, 12 hours apart, whatever you may be doing. If it's consistent at the same time every day, that's going to be more beneficial for your animal because then you're not going to be milking too early and taking out less than you normally would. You're not going to be milking too late and causing them to become, you know, over heavy laden with, uh, with the milk and stuff like that. So good point. Consistency is key. All right, shut down the video. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I think that's it. Pinky out.